Dirty bathtub water shows how dire the water crisis is in Mississippi. What some parents are saying their children are experiencing after coming into contact with the water in Jackson. Plus, tomorrow is the start of Labor Day weekend. If you're planning on going out of town, there are some things you can to do to avoid that heavy traffic expected on the roadways. And it's beginning of week two for high school football here in Texas. David and RJ breaking down some of the big games, plus a look at the start of college football. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, September 1st, the start of September. That's right. Uh, happy almost fall, y'all. Mm -hmm. 8.58 right now. Glad you're with us. Let's go outside with live cam. And as we talk to Justin, just saw an interesting note on Facebook from the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Justin said, just a reminder, today's the opening of dove season in many areas. You may hear numerous gunshots in rural areas. If you feel anything needs law enforcement action, give us a call. Good to know. It is yeah. the season. Yeah, we, we are headed right into September now with a pretty good looking forecast. I, I think we're going to have some good news for you uh, unless you have outdoor plans this weekend because we do have some rain in the forecast and pretty good chances of rain. Well, let's take a look at the weather headlines uh, today. Just some isolated stuff. We're expecting pop up shower storm. Nothing that's going to be too widespread. We'll watch for some scattered showers and storms this weekend. It's potentially wet and there could be some pockets of heavy rain. So we'll have to watch for some areas of flooding. I don't think it'll be widespread flooding, but for those areas that have already seen quite a bit of rain, we'll have to watch it closely. 78 degrees right now, mostly cloudy, feels like 81, but we've got a lot of cloud cover and uh, looking at the radar, there's not much there. We may see a couple of showers this morning and a couple more pop up again this afternoon. We'll also watch this evening. Some of the models hinting at maybe a few storms developing around San Antonio. Pollen count, molds are high at 1,940. Fall elm is moderate at 160. That is just in. That is the latest pollen count. How about that football forecast? We do have some games tonight. It'll be pretty toasty to start. 91. Sunset. That's around 756. We've also got the drop monitor hot off the presses. We're going to bring that to you. Plus, look ahead to September and have more on that weekend forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And here's a look out there at the eastbound Axis Road. It looks like uh, just past Days of Allah off of I-10. Looks like there was some type of incident there, and it looks like they're about to maybe tow a vehicle away. Uh, you can see there things are moving just a little slow right now. A hero truck is there to get people to uh, merge around the accident scene itself. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. The fate of Michelle Barrientes Vela could be decided as soon as today. The state rested their case against the former constable yesterday, and Barrientes Vela's attorneys have indicated that they will rest their case this morning, which sets the stage for closing arguments and deliberations to take place today. Barrientes Vela is accused of tampering with security records and faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted. A judge is set to hear arguments this afternoon related to the search of former President Donald Trump's Florida home. The hearing is about whether a special master should review classified documents the FBI seized. The Justice Department has argued a special master review could disrupt ongoing investigations. So far, the judge has indicated support for granting the request. President Biden is set to give a speech on what he calls the continued battle for the soul of the nation during a primetime address in Pennsylvania today. White House officials say Biden will touch on what's at stake in our democracy, as well as the progress his administration has made in protecting the nation's core values. California is facing a major power crunch amid one of the worst heat waves in state history. The National Weather Service is warning people in Northern California that daily, monthly, and even all-time temperature records could be broken during Labor Day weekend. And the record heat is complicating efforts to fight a new set of wildfires. The FDA is urging Americans to get their COVID-19 booster shots, warning that there is a higher risk of infection coming this fall. The World Health Organization also expects a surge of COVID and flu cases with colder weather. The FDA says only about half of eligible Americans have received their first booster. Bed Bath & Beyond now says it will close about 150 of its stores and cut its workforce by about 20% in a bid to save about $250 million. The chain also says it'll put more of a focus on national brands and get rid of about a third of its own store brands. You can expect to find more discounts this year than in previous holiday shopping seasons. 
Executives at Best Buy, Ulta, Gap, and other top chains have said in recent weeks they are expecting a shopping season packed with discounts. Walmart also said it was offering more rollbacks than in previous years. Some items likely to be discounted at any store include toys, clothing, TVs, beauty products, and sporting goods. There are discussions at Disney about a new membership program. The Wall Street Journal says the company is considering a program along the lines of Amazon Prime, which would offer discounts and other perks on everything from streaming services to merchandise. Serena Williams served up a major upset and once again inspired fans during her farewell tournament. The 40-year-old overpowered the number two tennis player in the world last night, advancing to the third round at the U.S. Open. She will face an Australian player ranked 46 tomorrow. But first, she takes the court tonight with her sister Venus for the doubles competition. And that's today's 9 at 9. And in morning headlines, folks in Jackson, Mississippi, still without running water, getting more and more frustrated. And an NBA champion is now a college graduate. David Sears is here with all of this. Good morning. Took Good morning. a while. But now he's got a college degree. Done. Nice. He's got an NBA championship trophy. So what do you think he's going to display more, the degree or the trophy? Hopefully both, both right? Put them right next to each other on yeah. the yeah. trophy case. We'll have that in just a second. But first, let's start with this. It's still a dirty job, and the cleanup is slow. And, yep, that is water coming from the treatment plant in Jackson, Mississippi. So much for getting a clean bath. Huh? That's what those residents continue to deal with. The line's still forming today. Folks looking for clean bottled water to survive. The main water treatment facility is still not back online. That plant usually supplies clean water to about 160,000 residents in their homes, schools, and businesses. But not these days. They are getting a new water pump, and hopefully they'll start getting some clean water pretty soon. But until then, parents are really starting to worry about their kids, making sure they're healthy and trying to get them back in school. I'm a parent of two kids. Even if you're not a parent, it's still a lot because we all got jobs. We go to work. Fever, headaches, they got chills, all of that. Um, I traced everything back to it was the water. Now, the mayor Jackson says this has been a problem for years that it may take a billion dollars to repair their system. But for right now, the governor of Mississippi has declared a state of emergency and has activated the National Guard to help distribute that water. President Joe Biden has signed a major disaster declaration that means the area will get help from Federal Emergency Management Agency. If you fly a lot or you plan to start flying, you might want to school yourself on consumer rights. Airlines now starting to change their policies when it comes to giving out hotel vouchers and food vouchers for cancellations. Airlines have been catching a lot of grief lately, some self-inflicted, some not. Thousands of flights have been canceled or delayed since back in May. So the big ones like United, Delta, Southwest, JetBlue are trying to make things easier for passengers. United is going to start giving meal vouchers if a flight is delayed more than three hours instead of four. American will give you a hotel room if you have to wait overnight. But the cancellation cannot be for something beyond their control, like weather. The same for Southwest if a room is available. The Department of Transportation is putting together a website that will make it easier for passengers to understand their rights. And finally this morning, congratulations to Steph Curry. He is not only an NBA champion, he is now a college graduate. Curry went to Davidson College in North Carolina. He was there from 06 to 09 before heading to the NBA. When he left, he left without his degree. But for the past decade, he has been working towards that goal. It was a one-man graduation ceremony. There were thousands from the community to come out and show their support. He not only got a diploma, but his college jersey also retired by the school. He finished a degree in sociology. I didn't know how hard it was going to be to finish when I left. You pulled in a lot of different directions. Um, grinding in the NBA is a full-time job. and. This whole time, I knew that this was something that I really wanted to, to see to completion. I was trying to figure out you know, how to really embrace this moment because my mom said, I don't know if anybody's had a, a solo graduation of this magnitude before. But it hit me just seeing you know, familiar faces, friends, people that you went to war with, uh, people that believed in you before even anybody else in the country knew what we were about. Set the table for me to come into this community and just be comfortable to be myself and to stay in the present and not putting any extra pressure on just being an amazing college athlete um, and em enjoying the journey of what it meant to be a student here on this beautiful campus. I think it took him a total of 13 years wow. to, finally, to finally get the degree in sociology. 
but he did it. And, you know, there's a lot of NBA players. I believe Shaq eventually got his degree from LSU yeah. after a while. So great example to stick to itiveness. <laughs> yes. Don't yes. give up. Yes. Keep working at it. And you said he got a degree in? I believe it's sociology. Sociology. Okay. So, but cool. congratulations to him. Yeah, there it is. Right. Look at that. That's pretty sweet right there. This, right next yeah. to that NBA championship trophy. Yeah. I pretty, think it display both. Yeah. Well, a pretty good plug for Davidson, too. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. And how many of us get to graduate by ourselves? I know, and still have a huge crowd. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear the music, though. Did they play the music? I did not well, hear Paul. announce his name and hand him the, the diploma they, and people I'm standing sure and clapping. And, I'm yeah. sure they but did. But they probably had the announcer. He's Steph Curry. <laughs> Maybe he just <laughs> runs out. <laughs> David, thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Talking uh, football coming up a little bit later on. 908, 78 degrees. And Tiffany Huetas joins us now. And Tiffany, what do you have coming up after the break? There's a new member of the Judson ISD family helping students express themselves, how she is bringing comfort and support to students coming up after the break. 912 Judson ISD students have a new four legged friend bringing smiles and comfort. The district's new therapy dog is helping students express themselves and adjust to school. Tiffany Huertas joins us live at Rolling Meadows Elementary. Tiffany, tell us more about the new member of their school district. Yes, all eyes are on Jojo today. Just take a look at this cute, adorable face. She's a miniature golden doodle and the newest member of the Judson ISD family. Every day she goes to school with school counselor Tiffany Gutierrez to visit students. Tiffany, talk to us about how she's been helping students. Really, the ways are so um, unlimited. So she has such a calming presence that anybody that comes around her just has such a big smile. Um, she helps students regulate their emotions, whether it's, you know, through petting her. Um, she has helped students get off the car when the little ones are crying, coming into the building, um, having a rough morning. Um, she just helps everybody feel better. So talk yeah. to us about uh, the different training that she has taken. So um, when I got her from a breeder, um, Tiny Paul's Golden Doodles, she came with a lot of the training already. Um, she came knowing her basic commands. I worked with her for about a year, the best that I could reinforcing those skills. Um, but she's in training now with Dog Training Elite here in San Antonio. And what does that prepare her for? Um, she is in training to be a certified therapy animal. Um, so she comes to school more as like a comfort animal now. Um, um, but she'll be eventually certified. What do you hope comes out of all this? <sighs> um, really the main thing is I hope students know that sometimes we have big emotions and that's okay, um, but we can also learn how to have those self-management strategies and a dog is a great vehicle for learning those. Um, I also, you know, she's so kind and she's non-judgmental, like she loves everybody that she meets. Um, she doesn't have a mean bone in her body and so I really hope that that's a glimpse of what counseling can be um, if and when students ever need to talk to a trusted adult. Amazing. Can you show us a little bit of what she can do? Yes, <laughs> of course. Okay, come on. All right, sit. Sit. Good girl. Can I have a high five? Yes. Lay down. Lay down. Wait for it. And oh. then she loves that oh. belly rub. Oh. That's what we came yeah. for. She's like, I'm going to stay put if you give me that rub. Oh, How yeah. sweet is she? She's spoiled rotten. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining oh, us this pleasure. morning. We're going to have more on this and hear from students coming up on the noon show. Back to you guys. Ah, uh, We love JoJo. Yes, we do. I'm sure the students are going to have a great time with JoJo. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks, Tim. Justin Horn is here, and I've spent part of the morning pretending that it's already Friday, but we're not there yet. <laughs> almost. Not, almost. I'm right there almost. with you on that wavelength, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, it, feel, it feels a lot like Friday. And as we head into the weekend, guys, we're going to be talking about rain chances, better rain chances. I know we've been talking about rain chances for the better part of two weeks now, but Saturday, Sunday, I think our rain chances go up some. And I want to start with the drought monitor because last week we had exceptional drought across a large portion of the area along Highway 90, uh, back over to San Antonio, north into the hill country. Well, look at this week. So the rains have helped, and we're starting to see this erode just a little bit, this uh, drought that we're in. 
gets a little bit better. And also on top of this, I want to show you the monthly rainfall for August. So the numbers were pretty good at the airport 2.13, but you go surrounding areas and places like Uvalde picked up over five inches for the month. Brackenville, uh, Del Rio, and these were all areas that were within that exceptional drought. So you can see the improvement. And by the way, this drought monitor does not include the rain that we had yesterday, so probably even more improvement by the time we get into next week. But August was pretty good. Now as we head into September, we'll see what kind of rainfall we can get uh, and see if we can boost these numbers even more. A little closer look here within that exceptional drought around San Antonio. Holotus over two inches for the month. Fair Oaks Branch over two inches. Spring Branch over two inches. So uh, yes, uh, August was pretty good to us. And yesterday with all that rain, we were keeping a close eye on the Medina River because it started to flow quite a bit. We were getting some video out of out of Bandera County. It went from 0.6 cubic feet per second to 253 just within nine hours. As of this morning, it's uh, come back down a little bit, 82.2. .2. But it was flowing really nicely yesterday. And then you probably are asking, well, is Medina Lake filling up? So far, it's still staying steady or falling. It's at 8% full. It takes a lot to get Medina Lake back up to where it was. We've got to have some really concentrated rain over the watershed. But uh, good signs here. The river stream starting to flow a little bit better now. And as we go outside for you, mostly cloudy, 78 degrees at the airport. Two point is at 73. Feels like 81 already. It's pretty sticky out there. And the cloud cover. Uh, fairly extensive here across San Antonio. You go east of town, there's more sun around Gonzales and Victoria, and temperatures will be warmer there. West of town, quite a bit of cloud cover and still a few very light showers holding on across parts of the hill country. Underneath these clouds, we're in the upper 70s, uh, where there is more sun. New Braunfels, 81, 77 in Seguin, and close to 80 in Gonzales. The case had 12 hour forecast, noontime 87. I do think we go partly cloudy this afternoon. Temperatures make it up to around 94, so it's a hot day, and heat indices will be in the upper 90s. And then this evening, we're going to boost rain chances just a little bit, and I'll show you why here in a second. Uh, I think we can see a few more thunderstorms, according to a couple of our models as we head into this evening. Just a 10% chance of uh, around noontime, 20% chance around 6 p.m. that evening commute. And then tonight, this model has quite a bit more developing and this is midnight by the way so we're going to bring those chances up just a little bit 30 percent and then tomorrow back to just a small chance of rain in the morning 20 percent chance during the afternoon with these pop-up showers and storms and then as we get into late friday night saturday we start to bring the rain chances up 30 percent and by saturday afternoon we're at 60 percent 60 percent chance on sunday two and a 40 percent chance on labor day so those were those high rain chances i was talking about Upper level energy moving in from the north shifts into the area, and that's why I think rain chances do increase. If you're heading down to the beach this weekend, I'll tell you, there's a pretty good chance of rain, 80% chance of showers both Saturday and Sunday down there around Port A and Corpus Christi. 90 on Monday with a 70% chance of showers, so it could be a little cloudy, a little wet. It's not going to be raining all weekend, uh, but just know that if your plans include the beach. Uh, 94 Friday, 88 Saturday, 86 Sunday. 88 on Monday for Labor Day, and then we're back in the 90s next week. But uh, somewhat unsettled patterns still holding on. September starting off on a good note. If you like rain, it's right. looking good. Did, did yeah. he say it might be stormy at the coast? Yes, he that, did. Is that what he yes, said? He did, Mark. But mm -hmm. think of it as overcast and nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Positive spin. Duly yeah. noted. Thank yeah. you. 919, 79 degrees. And Sabinal ISD, along with many other school districts, taking extra steps to protect their students. How they're getting the attention of students and staff to alert them of any kind of emergency. Elementary school shooting in Uvalde has prompted schools across the state to make serious security changes. And just over 20 miles east of Uvalde is Sabinal, and there it's no different. The superintendent of Sabinal ISD showed R. Lee Waldman they're taking the lessons learned from their neighbors to make the school year safer for their students. Again, when you push that, it's sending a pre-recorded message to dispatch, and also there's a GPS responder in here, so they'll get told what the coordinates are to this. Intruder alarms alongside fire alarms. It's a sign of the times in Sabinal. We're like the little brother or sister to Uvalde. Superintendent Richard Grill walked us through his school, pointing out the improved classroom doors, tempered glass, and numbers on windows to mark classrooms for law enforcement. If they're trying to determine which kids they need to get out of which rooms or which room the bad guy's in, 
they'll know which classroom this is. When you approach any Savinal ISD school, you're going to have to go to one of these ring doorbell cameras first. Hello, can I help you? Hi, this is Lee Waldman with KSAT. I'm here to meet with Mr. Grill. Can I see your uh, press ID? So I'll show her my ID here. Okay, I'm aware of your appointment. You can come in. Grill says they learned a lot from the Robb Elementary tragedy. And it's kind of a morbid thing to do, but uh, nonetheless, my job is to keep everybody safe here. New this year, the district is offering their staff free license to carry classes. They can't have weapons in school like the Guardian program, but they can have them in their vehicles if something were to happen and implementing the Raptor alert system. All right, so this is a an emergency alert that we've just put in place uh, that sends out a notice to all employer and uh, all employees for right. emergencies. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And Lee tells us that alert you heard at the end there sends a message to cell phones, computers, and over the school's intercom system. Yeah, also this year, law enforcement in the area is stepping up their presence on campuses, and there's an undercover armed security guard that will patrol the schools. Right now, 925, 79 degrees. And there's still much more ahead on GMSA at 9, including morning sports with David and RJ. They're going to have a preview of college football beginning this weekend. Plus, a year after the end of the war in Afghanistan, families of soldiers who lost their lives still carrying the weight of their grief on their shoulders. I can still remember all of the details. We focus on their bravery, their heroism, and the love that they displayed. What's bringing these women together and helping them heal after such a huge loss coming up? And welcome back. It is 928. This has been an extra emotional few days for Gold Star mothers who lost sons and daughters while serving in Afghanistan. It's now been one year since the end of a 20 year long war in Afghanistan. Jesse DeGoyado tells us about the bond between two Gold Star mothers whose sons died in two wars ending with the withdrawal of U.S. forces. The 2013 crash of a U.S. Air Force Stratotanker on a refueling mission to Afghanistan was on Marcy Voss's mind even more so, knowing one year ago the U.S. finally pulled out of Afghanistan. It did cause me to question the value of Tyler Voss was the co-pilot. His mother says it was the circumstances that day she questioned, not the sacrifice of him and his crew. We focus on their bravery, their heroism, and the love that they displayed. The son of Marcy Voss is memorialized here at Veterans Park in Bernie. It's where I spoke with Voss and another Gold Star mother, Ruth Holler. Her son, Lance Corporal Luke Holler, was killed in Iraq after an IED blast ripped through his Humvee in 2006. I can still remember all of the details. But like Voss, it was not only the shock and sadness of losing their sons. We were inundated with support and encouragement. Especially, they say, among other Gold Star mothers. It's a very healing process to turn that um, inside out, to focus on others. I call a lot of them my besties. This pair of Gold Star mothers say they have a shared bond of sacrifice, not only by their sons, but also by their friends and families. Because we suffered as well. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. And let's look outside with live cam right now. Still a few clouds out there, 79 degrees for now, but I guess the real rain chances will happen over the weekend, Justin. Yeah, a decent chance for some scattered downpours. I still think we're going to see some pockets of heavy rain here and there, so we're not done with the rain just yet. The, the chances do come down today. We've got clouds, but not a lot of rain out there. And let me show you the setup because we have an area of low pressure out across parts of Mexico that's still bringing heavy rain to far west Texas. So think El Paso, Midland, Odessa, places that need the rain too. And they're getting it this morning. And that low will continue to move off to the west. There's heavy rain flood watches in place across far west Texas. Where the heat is today, out west. So record heat for places like California, Nevada, up to parts of Idaho. Look at the high temperatures today, 108 in Vegas, 103 Sacramento, 105 in Phoenix. That's where all the heat will be. That's where that heat high is located. Not for us. It'll still be warm. We'll get into the 90s this afternoon, but nothing, nothing like that. There's a quick look at the live radar. We did have a couple showers earlier across the northern parts of the hill country. That has since gone away, so the radar is giving us the all clear. Your case had 12-hour forecast. Partly to mostly cloudy noontime 87, but we should be looking at partly cloudy skies this afternoon. 20% chance of rain still could see a few pop ups here and there. 
uh, with some lightning and thunder if anything does pop up. And then we're going to bring rain chances up just a little bit this evening. We'll watch what develops to our north. 30% chance around 8 and 9 o'clock. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All indications are that incident on the frontage road eastbound 10 at Days of Allah has now cleared. Looking live at 10 and Foster Road. Look, uh, be on the lookout for construction crews and road workers around town as we proceed throughout the business day. Well, in just a few short years, some text dot contractors have become we could call them heroes of our highways. And they are the people in those trucks you often see at the scene of road troubles and part of the Highway Emergency Response Operator or HERO program. As Katrina Weber shows us, they need help staying out of danger themselves. One phone call brings on a whole lot of help for drivers in need. They'll block off a lane of traffic, put out cones, they have arrow boards, they have lights on the trucks. With all of that, these highway heroes try to call attention to road hazards, such as a broken down car or crash, to warn other drivers to beware. HERO stands for Highway Emergency Response Operator, a program TxDOT rolled out locally two years ago. But for these contractors who put themselves in danger to help others, it can be a rough road. People not paying attention, thinking they can just zoom by. John Giannotti is operations manager of TxDOT's TransGuide Center, the eyes in the sky over our roads. Through cameras there, he says the staff tries to watch the heroes' backs and often gets a scary eyeful. We do have a lot of close calls. We have trucks hit. It was more than just a close call here at Loop 410 and Marbach a few weeks ago when fears became reality. Hero operator Chris Rose was hit by a car as he blocked off another crash. He's recovering from his injuries in the hospital. He's doing okay. We've had um, uh, other minor injuries before, but this is the worst one we've ever had. San Antonio police ruled out alcohol in the August 21st crash, although they're still not sure what went wrong with that driver. TxDOT wants others to do what's right. Stay off the phone. Um, don't be distracted by anything else in your car. Just concentrate on driving. State law also requires drivers to steer away from trouble by moving over a lane or slowing down. The idea is to keep heroes like these from harm. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And are you ready for some college football? Well, it kicks off this weekend with some big games here at home and across the state. David is back with RJ to preview this weekend's action and also to talk about what will be a very special night in Uvalde tomorrow night, guys. Oh, yeah. Football season, David. Yeah, <laughs> last weekend was here. big. This weekend is, <laughs> is pretty big as well because now mm -hmm. we, we've stepped up a level. We're, we're going to college football. Yes, we we're are. Yeah. Like UCSA <laughs> and A&M. Yeah, UTSA. UT, yeah. Uh, starting off with a big one here at the Alamo. They're going to be hosting the 24-ranked Houston Cougars, and I know they've been making a big deal about this, about packing the Alamo Dome for this big game. Here's the thing. They're ranked 24th in the country. I'm surprised that UTSA wasn't ranked in the top 25 after right. what they did last year. Plus, they've got some guys back, like Frank Harris, their quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, when your quarterback comes back mm -hmm. for another year when he could have gone, I mean, that's saying something about uh, the quality of this program, and he's not the only guy back. They've got several guys on offense and defense. They love the receiver core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Houston's got a pretty good defense, so gonna a fun something's going to give, yeah. as they say in the cliche of, <laughs> of, high, of, of covering college football. Yeah, something's David, going to give. You were mentioning some of those players. Of course, we're watching Frank Harris yeah. here. Um, of, he is coming in as one of the favorites for the conference player of the year. Of course, Jeff Trailer right there. Rashad Wisdom, their safety, also yeah. an all defensive player as well. And you mentioned the receivers. Yeah, they are absolutely loaded. You're right. You're right. I mean, they were 12 and 2 last season. Again, no respect for UT. Yeah. Remember they kept I, well, saying that last year? You know what you do then? You go out and earn it again. You go out and show these people that mm -hmm. uh, that you are one of the top teams in the country. And by the way, Frank Harris, uh, he earned that that zero. Yeah. He earned that number. Yeah. I love that, that idea. Yeah, that if you want a single toughness. digit number on your jersey, you got to go get it. Yeah. And that's what practice is, uh, is for. And of course, it's the triangle of toughness. Yeah. All right, David. So UTSA right. opening up at the Dome, 2.30 against Houston. Again, make sure you get out there, get yeah. rowdy, get loud for those road runners. But that's not all the action no. going on up the road. Austin, here we go. Texas starting <laughs> off with, well, uh -oh. hey, Stephanie's this guy's first game. Up. What do you throw, like two passes or something like that at, at Ohio State and yours is coming in? Now he got yeah. the starting job here at UT. So you think he's going to be a little nervous when he takes the field at UT? I, I don't know. Ohio State's a big a place bit. to play. But, yeah. but this is UT. This is Texas football. This ain't an Ohio football. 
Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so yeah, Steve Sarkeesian opening up his second season up there in Austin and going with Quinn Ewers. He was a South Lake Carroll star up there in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And then as you mentioned, David, he's transferred. So this is gonna be a big spot for him yeah. as they take on uh, Louisiana Monroe. Fortunately for him, he's got some offensive guys coming back. B. John Robinson oh, yeah. is, is back in the stuff. backfield, so he'll have a little bit of help back there. It's not like it's all all new and fresh. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but it's it's Louisiana Monroe. There you go. Okay, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. David. <laughs> well, it's I'm Louisiana sorry. Monroe. It's Louisiana Monroe. <laughs> Come on now. And, you know, a lot of people already have Texas winning the national championship. Uh -oh. So, you know, that you know how that is. Hey, yeah. you know what? I, I don't want to look ahead, but they do get uh, Bama in Austin yeah, next week. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll be Louisiana yeah. Monroe to yeah. start the and year. Speaking of winning a national championship, those folks up in College Station. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Six in the Justin. country. Look at, look at Justin. Oh, we got to deal with this all season. It's just all, <laughs> all season. Wow. We got to deal with this. <laughs> Number six in the country. And who are they playing, Justin, on Saturday? What, Sam what? Houston. Yeah, yeah. They, they went out and got him a tough one. Well, you know what? Sam Houston might give him a run for the money. They can play. Yeah, yeah the Bearcats, not take bad. Take yeah. for granted. Yeah, yeah. not bad. Yeah. Not a bad squad up there for Sam Houston. But uh, big thing here, A&M is bringing back Haynes King. He got hurt last year and won the job again this year. He beat out a five-star freshman and a, a big transfer from LSU. So Haynes King yeah. getting the gig there for Jimbo Fisher. And I think they got a little bit of pressure on. I don't know how much pressure is on Jimbo Fisher, but I think they got a little bit of pressure on him. They got they got you know decent start of the season, then they get into that SEC, and this this could be a interesting year for for him and mm -hmm. for them, given the fact that uh, they start ranked sixth and last year they had a chance to get into playoff and and didn't quite quite make it. So we'll yeah. see how yeah. uh, we'll see how that that all pans out. And then of course Texas Tech plays this weekend. Oh yeah, we'll take the state too. <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, who, who are your opponents, guys? I don't even know. What? Well, look it up. Texas Tech is yeah, I, I got it's you. Like it's the Bobcats. But I do know it's at seven o'clock in Jones Stadium. Okay. But it's nice. like some team that's like. All right, I got uh, you. Texas the, State is playing in Nevada in, in Reno. Nevada. Yeah. Okay. So stay out of yeah. trouble there, Bobcats. Yeah. Just have fun. Hopefully wow. we get a win there. Okay. Uh, so Murray we're State. switching gears. Who are we playing? Yeah. Oh, well, Murray State. Murray State. State. There you go, David. Murray State. Good luck to the Raiders. Know what? Good luck to the Raiders. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, Thumbs up. Also Go wanted time. to mention, David, yeah. Uvalde. They're going to be yeah. hosting their first home game of the season after uh, what was really, I mean, just an incredible win last weekend in Carrizo Springs. Talk about emotional. So they have a player on their team that's wearing number 21 for the entire season this year in honor of the 21 victims of that shooting. They scored 21 points yeah. on the road to win on Friday. So they're coming home tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. They've got a pep rally tomorrow afternoon, and then they've got the big game tomorrow night. And you know, a lot of, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of folks just looking forward to being able to come together as a community and cheer on their football team mm -hmm. and, and kind of put aside all the stuff that's been going on there for the last three months and, and focus a little bit on football, take their mind off of everything else for, for just yeah. a little bit. And, you know, I, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on these football players, but yeah, I'm sure they're absolutely. ready to, they're ready to perform for their, for their community. And that's what, uh, that's what these folks are looking forward to tomorrow night. So it's going to be a blast. And it will, Ooh, we got there. you covered. If you can't yes. go, guess what? Mm -hmm. You can see it. KSAT will be yeah, there. We're going to be there streaming the game, KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, our BGC streams as well. So make sure you check us out there on the BGC app. Also, David, uh, they're going to be honoring the 50th, yep. the team that won their state title in 1972. This is the 50th anniversary. The coaches on that team, I did a story with them yesterday with one of them, Jerry Comalander. Jerry Comalander. And Marvin Gustafson, yes. A lot of people recognize his name. Iconic San Antonio coaches. If you don't know who Jerry Comalander is, his name is on the stadium. Mm. Yep. Up there at Bitters in 281. Yep. That's what. That's how much of an icon he is. Mm -hmm. He, he uh, coached uh, Churchill for years for a long and time. years yeah. and years after after coaching in Uvalde. So so there's a, a San Antonio connection to uh, the Uvalde yeah. Coyotes coming up. Tomorrow. The Coyotes. So. It's going to be a, a very emotional night yeah. there, and uh, hopefully that community enjoys that evening tomorrow night. Yeah. Uvalde taking on Eagle Pass win. And you're going to be there. We'll be there, yes. Uh, so. We're doing stuff for our 10 p.m., and then we're also going to have, obviously, our sports crew there as well. So it's going to be a lot of people there yeah. covering the Coyotes. Yeah, I think Greg and Larry are going to be calling Larry, Greg the, and Larry be there for the game. Yep. game. Okay, looking forward to it. Glad we can share it with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Right. RJ, Thanks, David, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. 941, 79 degrees. You're watching.
DMSA at 9. And with gas prices going down, many people may be hitting the road for the three-day weekend. The three recommendations experts have for those of you driving out of town for Labor Day. And taking a look at the latest gas prices, according to AAA, national average right now, $3.82. Texas average, $3.34. And here in San Antonio, the average is $3.25. Gas prices continue to go down just ahead of the Labor Day holiday weekend, and Americans are taking advantage. Some experts are expecting more traffic on the road this year. And AAA is reporting an increase in travel bookings this holiday weekend. Jonathan Cotto has a look at some travel tips if you'll be headed out of town for Labor Day. It's the unofficial end of summer, and this holiday weekend, the number of Americans heading out of town is expected to climb as gas prices decline. There likely will be more Americans hitting the road uh, than what we've seen er from earlier this summer. According to AAA, domestic bookings for car, air, cruise, hotel, and tours for Labor Day weekend are up 22% compared to last year, with car rental rates up almost 32% compared to 2020. Experts say gas prices have fallen significantly from their summer peak, fueling demand for end-of-summer road trips. This is uh, the lowest we've seen prices in many months, so with summer rapidly closing, it likely will mean more Americans will be hitting the road for Labor Day than we otherwise would have seen if prices remained high. Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, has three recommendations if you're driving to your destination, plan ahead. Drive during off-peak times and avoid Friday and Monday afternoon and evenings, which typically see the highest traffic volume. And fuel up your tank when you spot the cheap gas to avoid paying more at popular tourist spots. Gas prices can fluctuate 20 to 50 cents a gallon simply by crossing a state line. Meanwhile, some airports are bracing for large crowds. Officials from Philadelphia International Airport say they're bracing for their busiest Labor Day since 2019. And travel experts say declining oil prices are leading to lower airfares and higher demand. Certainly an important factor when it comes to airfare. And so this is why I think there are more tailwinds right now when it comes to travel prices than headwinds. Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. 947. And I know we're at 80 degrees right now, but it feels cooler just because we're in September. I, don't know, I thought head. she was going to say it's I feel, feel like it's cooler because we're inside. Oh, well, that too. That works too. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, it's uh, as uh, our friend Stephen would say, September is a vibe. Yes. It's a vibe, and we're feeling it because we're headed into fall. And the averages, our temperatures really do start to drop. So we start to see fronts this time of year. September 1st, our average is 94. The average low is 93. But look what happens by the end of the month. 87 is the average high, 66 the average low. Fall officially begins on the 22nd. And yes, uh, we see those cooler temperatures because, yeah, we start to see some fronts coming through here. Now, there are none at least good fronts in the forecast coming out, but we'll get there. We will. And as we go outside for you, we've got some cloud cover, mostly cloudy, 79 at the airport, 80 at Stinson, 81 Kelly, 79 at Randolph, and not much of a wind. But what wind we do have is out of the east, and it should be pretty light today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here is the big picture, and you'll notice we've got showers stretching from Wichita Falls down towards Permian Basin and out across far west Texas. There's still a low out there spinning and still brings pretty good rain parts of far west Texas. For us, we've got a few showers along the coast, but nothing really uh, much going on here. And we don't have a, a trigger today, anything that's going to help create uh, widespread showers and storms. With that being said, the air mass is still tropical. We'll still get some heating, so there's going to be some pop-up showers, I think, by the afternoon. Water vapor shows us that low, and it's kind of getting pulled apart here, but there's a low out there around El Paso, and that's why rain chances are much better as you go west. Here's what our forecast looks like. Just a 10% chance of rain through the morning time, but notice we start to get some of those pop-ups by midday, and then by the afternoon we'll put in a 20% chance of rain. Uh, tonight, this particular model wants to put more showers and storms, maybe a little more widespread during the overnight hours with some outflow boundaries. We'll see. We did up the rain chances just a little bit to 30%. We'll keep an eye on that. If that does happen, we could get some pockets of heavy rain developing. And then by tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy to start. And then by the afternoon, we get some isolated pop-ups. 20% chance this is 4 p.m. tomorrow. Then as we head into Saturday, we're going to bring the rain chances up again, 30%. And beyond that, you'll see, uh, I think, the radar fill in a little bit more by Saturday afternoon. We get some energy coming in here. We've got good moisture. All those things combined. And we'll get some uh, scattered showers and storms. We bring rain chances up to 60% on Saturday and on Sunday as well. But in the meantime, 
not a lot today. 20% chance, 94 the high temperature. It'll feel warmer than that, of course, with uh, humidity levels staying pretty high today. And then there, as I mentioned, a 30% chance of rain by 8, 9 o'clock with temperatures in the 80s. Meantime, in the tropics, we do have several things brewing here. You would expect that in early September. Uh, we do have a new tropical depression, number five, as it uh, works off to the north and west. It looks like, or northeast, I should say, it looks like this may have become a tropical storm. I'm going to check on that in just a second. 80% uh, chance of development for the system just east of the islands, and then another one here, 30% chance of development. This beach, we mentioned this earlier, yeah, the rain chances are there. I know a lot of people are heading down to the coast. Just know it'll be fairly cloudy with scattered showers and a few storms each day this weekend. Uh, 94 tomorrow, 88 Saturday, 86 Sunday, with some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there, and then 40% chance of rain for Labor Day, a high of 88. We're back in the 90s by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We'll be right back. After 30 years, uh, nearly 30 years rather, after he retired from tennis, his name is still synonymous with both greatness and attitude. New documentary goes deeper than ever before into the life and career of John McEnroe. CNN's David Daniel gives us a preview of the film that comes out tomorrow on Showtime. You're doing your job, umpire. You're pathetic. How much bigger point can you screw it up with? Couldn't you see anything? From New York, John McEnroe. McEnroe shows both the super brat side of the tennis icon. But if I wanted to be like my idol, I did learn you gotta be a bit of a lunatic out there. You cannot be serious! And his quieter, introspective side. You always worry. You're too much like your dad. He was a perfectionist. That's my biggest flaw. I was melting down. 37 psychologists and psychiatrists didn't help. Not that I was wanted to reveal things unnecessarily, but I wanted people to sort of understand the journey that I've taken to get from where I was to where I am now. Filmmaker Barney Douglas dug for little or never seen footage and talked with those who know McEnroe best, from Billie Jean King to Keith Richards. He wants boldness. He doesn't want the norm. He wants, and he wants truth, and he wants authenticity, you know, and flaws and all. I would dwell on tennis matches when I could have been a better dad. That's the worst feeling. You know, you wonder how much you should give, give away, but, uh, Ultimately, I'm proud of it, and hopefully people will like it. You always hear, do whatever it takes to win, at any cost. Is it all worth it? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, Looks I have good. to check it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't forget, there's the new Lord of the Rings series, too, yes. on Amazon That's Prime. today. You guys have a wonderful day.